Hey guys, here's your video on 4.6 graphs of other trig functions. So after you're done watching the video, you should be able to graph uh, cotangent, tangent, secant, and cosecant. So the first thing we're looking at is graphing secant. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so I'm going to go ahead and make a note. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Okay. So I'm going to find the period and the phase shift and then sketch a graph over the specified intervals. So the period for secant and um, cosecant, they are the same as finding the periods for sine and, sine, sine and cosine. So that's going to be 2 pi over b, which b in this case, b is the number in front of x, which is 1. So 2 pi over 1, which is... 2 pi. So that means this graph is going to repeat itself every 2 pi units. And then the phase shift is negative um, c over b, so then that's going to be uh, positive pi over 4. So it's going to be shifted over pi over 4 units. Um, for our drawing, this is your x min x max, x scale, so that's how we're going to scale it. This is your y min, y max, and y scale. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph with the proper scaling. So for my y's, I'm going from negative 5 to 5. And for my x-axis, I'm going from negative uh, 2 pi to 2 pi, scaling it by pi over 2's. So that's going to be 4 tick marks. This is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is pi. 3 pi over 2, and 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And do the same thing in the other direction. So this is negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi. Okay, now to actually draw your secant graph, I'm going to draw cosine first. Now if you'll notice with... Um, the secant, we didn't have to state the amplitude, and I'll explain why in just a second after we um, draw out what our cosine graph would look like. So our cosine graph um, has peaks of negative 1 and 1, and then it repeats itself. So, oops. So it has a phase shift of pi over 4, so typically cosine starts at your positive amplitude which for this would be at 1, but I'm going to shift it over pi over 4 units, which is right here, since this tick mark is pi over 2. And then it starts at my positive amplitude, goes to 0, negative amplitude, back at 0, and back at your positive amplitude. And the process is going to repeat itself Shoot, I think I did something wrong. I plotted my points wrong because I wasn't paying attention to my phase shift. So I'm moving over pi over 4 units, which is why this first dot is at pi over 4, and then it hits 0, and then goes down to negative 1, back at 0, and then back at positive 1, so over here. Forgot to take into account my phase shift, sorry about that. And do the same thing in the opposite direction. So I'm in between my tick marks. And again, that's because of our super awesome phase shift. Okay, so here's what our cosine graph would look like if this were cosine. Which is not, but it's going to help us graph the secant. Okay, 
So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So when I'm taking this graph, I want to take the reciprocal of it, which means I'm going to take all of those values and um, turn them upside down. So what ends up happening, particularly at these values that I'm going to highlight in purple, those values are at zero. So when I take a zero and flip it over, it becomes undefined, which is why some of the values of secant are undefined because cosine is zero. To graph something that's undefined, that just becomes a vertical asymptote. So all of these are gonna have vertical asymptotes. Okay, now to actually sketch the graph of secant, what you're going to do is you're going to start at all of the um, peaks. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you're going to start at all of your peaks and you're going to extend towards the asymptotes without crossing or touching them. And the green curves that I'm actually graphing right now, that is the graph of secant. And then this one over here, and there's that piece, and over there. So the green curve is the actual graph of uh, secant. Now, graphing secant by hand, as you can see, is is a pretty complicated process. So if you wanted to, and I'm totally okay with this, you can use the calculator to graph it. So if I'm gonna put this in the calculator, I'm gonna graph y equals, and I don't have a secant button, but I do have a cosine, so I'm gonna type in one over cosine of x minus pi over four. And when you're putting this into the calculator, you are gonna have to adjust the windows and you're gonna adjust them using the scaling that I gave you. And then once you do type this into the calculator, the calculator should give you a graph that looks like what we have in green. Don't forget to double check the mode on your calculator because these are in radian, so you need to make sure that you're in radian mode. Um, so once you do graph this in the calculator, you can go ahead and just copy the graph onto your paper. So what I'm going to be looking for in terms of grading it is I do want to see your tick marks. So I want you to label them just like I labeled um, my tick marks for the black graph. And then from there, I want you to sketch out your asymptotes and then your curves. So even on the calculator, you can see where the asymptotes are because that's where your graphs are going to go in opposite directions. All right, graphing cosecant, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Now if you'll notice inside your trig function we have that two, so I'm going to go ahead and factor it out just like we did with the sine and the cosine stuff. So that becomes two times x plus pi over two. And the reason why I need to factor out the two is because it's going to help me figure out the phase shift. So your period, again, is 2 pi divided by b. b in this case is 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. Your phase shift for this is going to be negative pi over 2. And from there, we can go ahead and uh, use the calculator to sketch our graph. Uh, but I'm going to create my scaling for my x and my y axis. So my y-axis goes from negative 5 to 5. And my x-axis goes from negative pi to pi, scaling it by pi over 4s. So that's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4 is pi. Same thing over here. Negative pi. And here's what I'm going to put into my calculator. So on my calculator, I'm going to go into y equals. I'm going to type in 1 over sine of, and you can do the original or you can do the factored one. I'm going to go ahead and do the original. 
but again, we did have to factor it to get a correct phase shift. So I'm going to go to y equals, I'm going to type in 1 over sine of 2x plus pi. I do need to adjust my window, so I'm going to hit window. Here is my x min, so x min is negative pi. x max is positive pi. x scale is pi over 4. y min is negative 5. y max is positive 5, and y scale is 1. And then go ahead and hit graph. And you can see where your curves are. So I have a curve that's at this tick mark and then extends like so. I have another curve it's at this tick mark and extends like so. I have another one over here. So right now I'm literally just copying it straight from the calculator. In a perfect world I would love for you to do this by hand but you know I'm not actually here to teach you. Um, but I do want you to draw your asymptotes. Your asymptotes are where your graphs are going in opposite directions. So there's one right here. Uh, one on top of your... Whoops! There it is. Uh, one on top of your y-axis. One at this tick mark. And then you got one over here and one over there. And there is your graph of cosecant. All right, the next thing we're looking at is graphing tangent and cotangent. Um, so tangent and cotangent, they have a different period because it repeats more often than sine and cosine do. So for sine and cosine and secant and cosecant, the period is found by taking two pi divided by b, but for tangent and cotangent, the period is pi divided by b. Phase shift is still exactly the same. And then this right here for your vertical asymptotes, this number 2, is not super important, so I'm not really going to spend um, any time talking about it. So let's go ahead and make a graph. Okay, so my period for tangent is pi divided by b. B in this case is 1, so that's pi over 1, which is just pi. And my phase shift is negative C over B, so I'm going to take the opposite of that, so negative pi over 4. I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my graph with the proper scaling. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, scaling it by pi over 2, so I'm going to need four tick marks. Because pi over 2 goes into 2 pi four times. So negative 2 pi. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the calculator. So I'm going to take one half, so 0 0.5, tangent of x plus pi over 4. I'm going to adjust my window, so it's negative 2 pi to 2 pi, scaling it by pi over 2's, negative 5 to 5, and y scale is 1, then I'm going to hit graph. And as you're hitting graph, you'll see all of these different curves. You do have asymptotes because they um, have undefined values for tangent. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the graph from my calculator. So I can see that it crosses the x-axis at these points. So there's one right here. There is another one over here. There's another one over here. I wish I could show you guys my calculator. But unfortunately this program won't let me do it. Okay, and then I have an asymptote in between those points, so right in between them. So there's one asymptote right in between 
right in between and here's my other asymptote okay and for my tangent curves I am going to extend towards the asymptotes without touching or crossing and again I am literally just copying the graph from the calculator and then you also have this piece over here and that is your graph of tangent uh, let's look at cotangent so cotangent of 2x minus 1 half that I need to factor so that's going to be cotangent of 2 times um, x minus and I'm taking pi over 2 and cutting that by 2 dividing it by 2 so that's pi over 4 so my period is pi divided by b which is pi over 2 phase shift is pi over 4 so it's going to be shifted pi over 4 units and then I'm going to create my graph So this one's going from negative pi to 2 pi, scaling it by pi over 2's. So over here I'll have two tick marks. On the right hand side I will have 4. So there's pi and there is 2 pi. And then scaling it by 5's. So negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5. I'm going to plug this into my calculator. So what I'm typing into the calculator is 1 divided by tangent, since cotangent isn't a button. And I'm going to go ahead and do the original. You can do the factored one if you want to. Um, but I'm going to type this in right now. So that is 1 divided by tangent of 2x minus pi over 2. I'm going to adjust my window. So that's going from negative pi to 2 pi pi over 2, negative 5 to 5, and 1. And let's hit graph. All right. So you see that your cotangent graph is crossing at every one of those tick marks. Hopefully you see that if you graphed it in your calculator correctly. So I'm crossing at all of my tick marks. You can also see your asymptotes. So uh, graph your asymptotes. They're in between every tick mark. Lots of asymptotes. I forgot this point right here because it crosses at the origin. Lots of asymptotes. Whoops. There you go. <laughs> now it's dashed. Uh, and then I can make my graph. So I'm going to extend towards my asymptotes without touching or crossing the asymptotes. Just copying from my calculator. Good old calculator. And you got this piece. So on my calculator I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven curves. What I just drew had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven curves. So I did it correctly. All right, so like I said, on your homework assignment, you can go ahead and use the graphing calculator to sketch all of your graphs. You do still need to find the period and the phase shift um, by hand, but everything else you can use calculators for. All right, so that concludes your notes for section 4.6.